So good everyone. Good day, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to another session brought to you by your biz edge. So for today's session, we'll be taking power automate for sending emails from Excel. Right. So our special guest is God Saints. And this session is brought to you by your biz edge, right? So your biz edge. And we are registered Microsoft Excel consulting, financial modeling, and also business intelligence data analysis and enterprise solution firm in Nigeria. We specialize in helping companies and high value professionals be on top of their business data. We're also the developer of some Microsoft and data tools, which can find at Microsoft Office Store, such as the Nigerian Finance Market Analysis Tool, We're also the developer of the Nigerian Stock Analysis Dashboard. Also, a training company. We have our branches in Lagos, Abuja, and also in Port Harcourt, right? So, our next training is going to be on the seventh of March. We're having Python for data analysis, and followed by that on the tenth of March, we're having in-depth Excel training, executive dashboard, and data and business data analysis. Um, on the fourteenth of March, we're having also also we're having in-depth Excel training, executive dashboard, and business data analysis. As uh, so our special guest. God sent, right? So God sent is a data and uh, data scientist who is basically curious about data and also passionate about fast innovation. He has over four years of experience in building data lake, creating over 300 plus well detailed and visually appealing visualization and building machine learning model that power global solution, delivering everyday value to people. Also, as it's also a data engineer, which is very nice. As a data engineer, he has led the deployment and maintenance of API, which is known as the blend. For Alawi, which on unifies data for three plus data sources in the consolidated format, serving 400 plus businesses. His core strength is in Python scraping, Python scraping, machine learning, statistics, and also analytics using Excel, Tableau, Google Data Studio, and also Power BI. So, no further ado, I want to over the session to God send. So, God send, I'll stop sharing my screen right about now. All right. Awesome. Hey, thanks. Thanks, Demida, for that wonderful um, interview. So, hey, guys, uh, good, good afternoon, um, Nigerian time to everybody. So, yeah, um, I've got two screens on. So if you've got like anything to text, you could just type in the chat. Maybe you can't hear me or you need me to go over something. Please just let me know in the chat. Yeah. Um, all right. So before we get started, uh, I just wanted to say that um, Temi Dayo and Chidi, um, the team at your biz edge, if you guys could like share your social media links so everybody just gets connected to your um, social media, because I think it's good work that you guys are actually doing. So um, please, guys, just follow your biz edge everywhere, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn and all of that. And uh, yeah, so I'll just jump straight into it. Um, so first things first, I think you guys will need to pardon me. Um, yes, I was supposed to give a session on using Power Automate to send emails from Excel to your, um, you know, to anybody that you have their email address in that Excel sheet, right? And um, I wanted to do that because, um, if not for anything, this is a, this is a, um, an Excel community. So I wanted to keep that whole culture of Excel, you know in there but um i did run into some power automate issues like just recently and it would have been hectic to try to solve those issues and i didn't want to come into this meeting uh you know unprepared or what's not yeah so i would i will digress however to talk about data cleaning um so if you're an analyst which i believe most of you are or some of you um you know, are getting to be, you would understand what data anal um, data analysis and more so you would understand data cleaning, right? So yeah, um, I will, I'll, I'll talk about data cleaning and um, different, like I'll just run you through an analysis notebook that I have, I've done before. Actually, I did this um, when I was doing my data analysis nano degree um, with Elasticity. So that was when um, I got to learn better about data cleaning, right? So I'll just share with you um, the notebook and I hope you get to learn interesting stuff about um, data cleaning. All right, so <laughs> Temidayo sent my link to. Well, thank you, Temidayo. Well, yeah, I, I just share your business. I'm not even connected to your business edge yet. So if you could share your Twitter or something, so I'll also follow yeah, you guys, yeah. that would be great. Okay, yeah. fine, I'll All right. send everything. 
All right, thanks, Bob. So um, I believe you guys could see my screen. Today, um, I'll be doing a TMDV. TMDV um, movie. Sorry, sorry. Um, sorry. Um, God said, you're, your screen, you're, you're not sharing your screen right now. Oh, my God. Oh, thank you. Thank God. Thank God I pointed that out. Please, yeah. if at any point you guys can see my screen, please just let me know. Cause... It's up now. Perfect. Okay, yeah. On Teams, I can't see what I'm presenting. So I, I don't know if that's just bad. Okay, cool. So yeah. Um, this analysis um is a movie data analysis if you're a movie person you know i'm sure tmdb is like one of your go-to tmdb imdb fandom um you know so this is the table of contents introduction data wrangling eda and then some little conclusions right so like i said it's just a movie um analysis it's about 10k movies collected from this site the movie database and um yeah so i will just run you through that and why i'm using this to why i'm using this to um you know explain data cleaning to you guys is i think the data set is one data set that um really really covers that data cleaning concept in in great detail and so this is going to be an interactive session and um, so I'll I'll need volunteers to just help me go, um, you know, how long as we go and all that. Yeah. All right. So okay, I think first first interaction. Let me see. Um, if you're a Python developer, say it in the chat or put your hands up or something. <clears throat> Let me just know, have a sense of the audience I'm speaking to. So if if, if you've ever written any Python code, man, whether it's like hello world, uh, Prince Hello World or you know, you're like an expert in Python or, you know, you want to learn Python, just let me know what level you are or if if you've never done Python before, still let me know. Okay, so Temidayo, Temidayo is a Python dev. Who else, who else is a Python? Yeah, Temidayo is definitely a Python dev. TD2, um, Jerry, Taiwo, Michael, David, Anthony, Oladimiji, are you guys Python dev? Okay, Oladimiji says no, okay. Any other person? Please keep it coming. Okay, David, yes, Tywo beginner. All right, that's great. Okay, cool stuff. All right, so in Python, um, this is me reading my, okay, we have, in Python, we have a library called Pandas. Um, please learn what that is, um, you know, on your own, but in, in, in a summary, right? Pandas, one good way to think about Pandas or how I explain Pandas to people is Pandas is like Excel for Python. You know what you could do in Excel, you pretty much can do in Pandas, right? Or in, in the Python environment, and Pandas is what allows you to do that. So this is how we access our data in um, Pandas, right? So this is the name of my CSV. Please let me know if my screen, my font is like too small for you. Also, I could just zoom in, uh, because my fonts are small for like the way I'm looking at it. Should I zoom in? Um, so for me it's fine, but I don't know. We can zoom it a little bit, but it's fine for me, yeah. All right. It's, it's, okay, they said it's okay. okay. Said it's okay. okay, all right. So maybe I can just take it back. All right, so this is my um, CSV. Of course, you know what that is, comma separated value. This is what it looks like. And in Pandas, this is how we read. This is how we access our data or our CSV, right? PD.read on that CSV. We'll give it a variable name. And what I'm doing here is I'm having a brief um, understanding of what is going on in the data sets. So another another quick question. Who understands what they see here? This whole part, who understands it? Anybody? Or this code, you know, just let me know if you understand. Most especially this code, this line two. If you just understand, you just unmute your mic or type it in the chat. Let me see. David said is the Python dev. So David, what's up? Do you understand? Do you understand what you're seeing on the screen? This part of the code here. Do you understand this? Give the info and data type of the data. Oh yeah, that's true. Shows data type by columns. Oh okay. Yeah, you guys are correct. Also, so um another question. Um, is there missing value? Is there missing data? in my data sets, is there any row or column that you know you think has missing values? And you know, why do you why do you think that? 
just let me know in the chat or um, unmute your mic. <clears throat> It's OK if, if you don't also think that there are no missing values, right? Um, I think that's actually a good thing to say. That way, you know, you get to learn. No missing data, OK? Any other person, do you think like there's missing data? Um, you know, David says no. OK, Tamila says no. OK, all right. So um, you guys are correct when you said that this line of code here, it basically gives you an info of the data right so by info um, we're looking at how many columns are in your data how many rows are in your data um, what data types make each column right and um, one thing that i love about the um, dot info method in python is by the way please if anything here sounds foreign to you <laughs> uh, please just read the python document um, the pandas documentation um, it will help you get on to speed with you know some of the methods and terminologies. So one thing I love about the dot info method in, in pandas is um, this part here that says non null count, right? So um, if you don't know what null means, let me start from there. So null means um, none, right? Or missing, right? You could in certain contexts also say empty so for example if you have a, a nil i think nil is a very common one right if you're filling a form and um you know a, a question in the form does not apply to you right let's say the form asks you how many cars do you have and you don't own a car right now um you you could type zero or you could type nil you know in a situation where that question does not apply to you right so that's the concept of null. n u double l now when you say non null what you're then saying is you're saying the opposite of null, which means that um, there is data in that place or the data is present, right? So when you then put it all together to say non-null counts, you're basically counting um, the number of rows in your data that actually has data. So for example, what I mean is, um, uh, 10,866 rows in this data set, right? Um, this column here has no missing data. The ID column, it has no missing data. The IMDB underscore ID column has 10 missing data. Um, you know, this one here has a couple of missing data. This one here has about 8,000 missing data. And you you know this because it says non null. So this one here says ten eight six six non null, which means ten eight six six um, rows actually do have data. You know, so and that's what that means um, there. D does anybody understand that part? Uh, please just let me know. If you don't, also let me know. You know, yes, no. I love I love to get either or both um, responses. And it's okay. It's okay if any of this is confusing to you, most especially if you've never been introduced to, um, you know, Python before or um, you're, you're at your beginner level. <clears throat> does anybody, come on, nobody understands or nobody does not not understand. <laughs> if you understand it, let me know. Just type a yes. If you do not understand it, please just let me know and just type a no for me, right? Okay, Tyler says he doesn't understand. All right, that's great. Any other person? Oh, okay, cool. So um, I'm gonna just do something for you. Uh, so I'm just gonna say pandas. That's another way you spell pandas. Pandas.info, and I'm gonna just search that. Uh, I'm looking for a tutorial, actually. <laughs> Okay, blah, 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 blah. Nah, this might be very hectic for you. So I'm going to just do a tutorial if I something like that. And there's blah, 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 W3 function, 10 minutes of pandas. Nah, no, what I'm looking for. Yeah, let's, uh, is a quick, yeah, I think this might work. Let's see. All right, so this is quite a readable thing to look at. 
I guess. So I'll share this article with you guys. Um, it would it would help you learn more about um, pandas specifically. And then I'll just share another one that talks about the dot info um, method. If if there's time, then I'll just go over it. Um, but I've got like just about under an hour to do this, and I wouldn't want to overstretch my time. So let me just see that this one works for you. Uh, something's great. Now this is gonna be hectic. Yeah, but I guess that article that article I shared originally should work for you. So I'll just tell you what's happening here, right? So like you guys said, which is very correct. Thank you very much. This shows you the information of your data, right? Now, um, these are the columns in your data sets. These are the data types in your columns. These are the dates. What's each column? The data type of each column. So you know, in sixty four means it's an integer. Object means it's a string. Float means float 64 means it's a float, you know, and things like that, right? And then the non null count is counting each row in your data that has data that has value in that row. You know, because sometimes you could find a row that is empty, right? So it, it, it's not going to count that. So that's why you have, um, you know, 1086 is null null count. Yeah. Um, so I will just. I'll, if there's time, I'll come back to this and you know explain better what's happening here. Um, so, but real quick, summary of all of this is there's missing data in our data sets, right? So there's missing data in our data set, and I'm just going to clean it. And um, I'm I would not, I don't think I would explain the code as I'm cleaning it. Um, so, but I'll just do that. And yeah, I think the data is cleaned now. Yeah, so the data is pretty much clean. Um, if there's also time, I will go back to explain stuff that I did there. All right, so the data is clean. There's no missing data anymore in our data sets. Um, but I want you guys to look at something for me. So um, you see this column here that says genres, right? Um, and then you see in the first row, it says action, adventure, science, fiction, thriller. The second row, it says the same thing. Um, the third row, it says just adventure, science, fiction, and thriller, right? So in the chat, just let me know, what do you think this column is trying to explain to you? What do you think this column is trying to explain to you? Either you type or you could just um, unmute, unmute your mic and um, let's just have a go. Okay, film category. Oh, that's great. Nice one. So, yes, um, like David said, it's actually explaining the film category for you. And um, I'm going to just make it better. Yeah, Temidaya says the genre of the movie. And that's a very smart one. Thank you so much, Temidaya. Um, so, I will just explain better for you. Just do this, right? So, as you can see, um, for the first row, it says action, adventure, science fiction, and thriller, right? Now, um, who could tell me what data type this is? Um, anybody in the chat? Just tell me. If you don't know, please just tell me you don't know. If you know, um, tell me what data type you think it is. Um, I'd love to get both or either answers, you know. It just helps us learn. So what, what data type do you think this is? Um, pro tip. It's it has um, inverted commas or apostrophes, you know, at the end and at the beginning. Text string, yeah. So Tim Dio got it. Um, he says it's a it's a text data type or it's a string data type, right? So um, a deeper question that I want to ask you. So joining both of them together, if since you said that um, the the column right is explaining the categories or the genres of the movie, right? Now, do you think that it would be great to have all of the genres together in one row? Now, this is a trick question. It might be a trick question to you, but um, you know, what do you think? Do you think we should put action, adventure, science fiction, and thriller together in one string, in one row, or should we have it separate? 
you know, action comes to one role, adventure goes to another role, science fiction goes to another role, thriller goes to another role. And it's okay if, you know, you don't understand this just yet. Okay, David said splits, right? And I, that's, I love that word. Thank you so much, David. I wish I could give you a thumbs up or so. Okay, I can't give you a thumbs up. So I, I'm gonna just give you a thumbs up and a heart. But I can only choose one. Yeah, titles are separate. Thank you, guys. I love this. I love this words you guys are using. And I think they're actually very, very factual. Yes, splits, right? And it just makes perfect sense because if you so we already know that this is a string data type, right? But you know, because you and me were analysts, we can see that there are one, two, three, four different types of strings in one string data type, right? And isn't that just confusing? Like, why would you have, say for example, you know, um, I, I guess this is why people in some forms have first name and last name instead of having um, Eliel Godsend together as one string, right? So most especially in this context of genres, it would be best like how David, Taiwan, and Midaya have said that you split this up to each unique rule for themselves, right? And I'm just going to show you something that helps validate what David Taiwan Temidayo said that makes it true. Um, so in some, I don't remember the year, but um, this guy called Hedley, uh, he did, he's a statistician, right? And then he did put up this journal um, that basically explained what we should, what on what we understand today as clean and as Sorry, excuse me, as what we, what we understand to mean dirty and messy data, right? I'll just give me a second, let me find the journal. I think this is it. Um, I saw it tied data. Is that the journal? Uh, blah, blah, blah. No, that, that's not the journal. I'm going to just... Uh, Haley, tidy data journal. Uh, should be this one. I guess it's this one. Yeah, this is the one. All right. Yes. So um, I know that, yes, oftentimes in the data analysis career, people just go and say, oh, that data is dirty, that data is clean. But well, right, sometimes we don't really know what we mean by clean data. We don't really know what we mean by dirty data. And very, very common, all we know is dirty data and clean data, right? But then Haley, what's his full name, by the way? Uh, Haley Wickham. So Haley um, puts forth, I don't know if he says it, thesis or whatever, but he put it for the journal. And that gave us the introduction to something also called messy data and tidy data. So mind you, your data could either be clean, sorry, your data could either be dirty and or messy, right? So um, dirty data is data that deals with content problems. Messy data is data that deals with structural problems. And I will explain what all that means in a second. Now, for example, if we go back to this data set, in this place before, when I did say that we had missing um, values, at this point, our data was both messy and dirty. And um, I wish, okay, I, I might, uh, I wish I could type somewhere. So I'm gonna just type here, open the markdown, and uh, I might just say uh, dirty data, just so we have that at the back of our minds, right? And then we also have messy data. And this means two different things, right? So this guy deals with content, and this old guy deals with structure right and when you've cleaned this guy when you've you know done your analytical work on dirty data it becomes clean data and when you've done your analytical work on messy data it becomes tidy data right so say for example um i'll just paint an example for you real quick um let me see let me see let me see let me see all right so if you've got sand in your room what would you say your room is you have like, you just, I don't know, you go to your room or someone opens your room and there's sand. There's like a big pile of sand in your room. <laughs> what would you say your room is? You could just type in the chats or unmute your mic. Dirty, right? All right, thank you, Taiwo. Now, if you have your clothes on your bed, what would you, what would you call that? 
is that like is that is that also a dirty scenario? You know, if you have clothes on your bed or your shoes, messy, right? Exactly. So thank you. So that just puts in context for you when I say content and structure, right? So by content, I mean it should not be there, right? So you should be asking the questions of should this be in this place, right? So for example, should sand be in your room? <laughs> I mean, no, right? <laughs> Even if you're a farmer, you shouldn't have sand in your bedroom, right? You shouldn't have, um, I don't know, stones in your bedroom, right? Because it is not supposed to be in that environment. So that is a content problem. Now, your clothes, however, are supposed to be in your room, but you store them, you organize your clothes in your wardrobe, right? Or in your I don't know, your closet or your drawer or your hanger or whatever you use to store and organize your clothes. So you see how, um, you know, Dirty talks about content and you see how Messy talks about structure, right? So the question for Dirty is, should this be here? And then the question for Messy is, um, is this the way this should be stored? Is this the way this should be organized? Right. So, for example, <laughs> I don't think anyone would keep shoes on top of their work table. Right. Because your shoes should be in your room, but your shoes are not supposed to be stored or organized on your work table. Yeah. All right. So we've established that um, this journal's column is actually messy because we should have this data. We should actually have this data that says action, adventure, science fiction, and thriller, but we it's not supposed to be organized or you know stored the way so it's stored right now. There's, 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 there are better things we could do to it, right? And this is the Python code that solves that for us. And mind you, it's not only the journalist column that's like that. Production companies also has that problem. Um, Cast also has that problem. I think keywords, um, you can't see keywords, but keywords also has that problem. And um, basically we use the dot splits method on the pipe character to do that because as you can see here, each word or each genre is separated by the pipe character. This right here is called the pipe symbol or the pipe character. So if I run this and I do this, uh, so give me a second, that didn't quite work. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not done with that. Yeah. Uh, give me a second. So I will just come back here. I need to run that. Uh, yeah. So I could just run this. Where is it? All right. So now, if you look at the journal's column, you'll see that. I've fixed that problem, right? So action is in one row, adventure is in another row, science fiction is in another row, thriller is in another row. Um, I think, yeah, that's what we stopped. And the next ones that had action and all of that. And how you know that this is for one movie, if you come here, you see that the ID is the same. So 135397, 1353971353397. All the way to this index of one, right? So you see that one, two, three, and four belong to the same movie, basically. So now our data is now the, the entire data set is not um, tidy yet because we still have um, the problems in cast, keywords, and production companies, right? I only fix that for genres. Now, mind you that fixing that gave me 18,000 rows. Originally, we had 1,000 rows, right? But by the time that I um, organized the data properly, we now have 18,000 rows. So if I do the same thing for cast and keywords and production companies, this 18,000 rows could skyrocket to 200,000 rows. And um, I didn't want to do that, um, you know, so for storage, um cases right but i mean i could still do that um yeah but now you understand the concept of dirty and messy data and now you also understand the concept of um how you should organize um 
your data. So going back to Hadley's journal, he gives us three points that really put this into perspective. So each variable forms a column. Now what it means here is each row in that in that in that column should be of the same data type. Yeah. Because imagine if you have a column where the first five rows are integers and then this this the the fifth the sixth row is now a string. Right. So let me just see if I can just show you guys real quick what that means. So she's at Google.com. I don't think I have it so open somewhere. Right. And then the second point it gives us is each observation forms a row. Now I believe that you understand that at this point, when you're going through your um data as an analyst, um, row wise, that's an observation. You know, an observation is um a certain character or a certain entity for which different variables affect. If if that if that's a mouthful for you, I'm so sorry, but I think that's just about the best way I know how to explain it. And then the third point that it gives us is each type of observational unit forms a table. Now, what he means here is each cell should be one data type, right? So this is wrong, according to Hadley. This is wrong because there are multiple strings here. There's Chris Pratt, there's um, Bryce Dallas, there's Howard, there's um, Ifan Khan. So these are like one, two, three, four, five different actors that are just compacted into one um, row by fire and by force. So Hadley says that this is wrong. You should only have one unique data type per cell. So Jurassic World is accurate. Um, uh, you know, the pack is open is accurate. Um, you know, this budget of $150 million is also accurate. Yeah. So does anybody understand me to this point? Please just let me know, um, you know, yes, if you understand, no, um, if you don't understand. So. All right, so Temidayo says yes. Any other person who says no, I'd love to get a no, at least, you know, it just means that we're learning. So um, I did say that I wanted to explain this. Each variable forms a column. Okay, Taiwo says no. All right, so Taiwo, I think Taiwo is the second no I'm getting. Um, let me see, someone else. All right, so Taiwo, could you please just let me know what you don't understand so that I address that? And um, also, I think Taiwo, you were the one who also said you didn't understand the info method previously. So if you could just type to me, you know, things that are not clear to you, or if you just didn't need to go over the whole thing, at the end, I would definitely do that. Um, you know, okay. Hi. Oh, thank you, Queen. Um, yeah. If 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 it's if, if a little bit of it is clear, I think that's fine. Uh, if time doesn't allow us, please reach out to me. I'll be happy to you know um jump on a call with you, anybody here, and just you know help you understand this thing better. Right. All right. So I wanted to explain this part here, and I said that each column should have a one data type. Right. So, sorry. Now, if you look here, <laughs> who thinks this is right or wrong? I don't know, man. What do you guys think? This integer column, or maybe maybe not integer. Let me just say cakes. I guess just I don't know what I'm doing here. So cakes is that the right that cakes? Yeah. So who thinks this is right or wrong? Please just let me know. Oh, variable and observation. All right. So I'll explain that um, table. It's wrong, right? And I mean, it just makes perfect sense. Thank you, David. I think it just makes perfect sense <laughs> why, why this is wrong. So that is what Hadley is explaining in his first point. You know, I mean, you are, you know, I don't need to explain it to you. So this should be, I mean, it, it, it either it's numbers all through or it's words all, all through, you know, so you get to decide for yourself, right? And um, all right, so that's that. Um, so let me just do this. Uh, is this is the right thing to do. So let me just do this event, uh, birthday, uh, let's go wedding. That's not how you spell wedding fun. So wedding and, uh, I don't know. We just go with another birthday. And then what other event do we have? Uh, I don't know, wedding again. 
<laughs> I can only think of birthdays and weddings as the only events that we have. What events? Lunch. Let's just say lunch. Yeah, I guess that's that. Uh, attendance. We could just say, no, nah, I think I want to use a different data type. Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Online? No, that, that, that wouldn't work. Yeah, I guess this works. Yeah, anniversary. Thank you. Thank you, Taiwo. All right. Now, now I need I need one more variable to really sync this in. So we have cakes, we have events. Uh, what else? What is attributed to party? I'm looking for a Boolean data food. Yes. So was there food? Was there food? Right. So I'll just say um, yes, no, yes, no, and yes. Thank you so much, Taiwo. That's a I feel like Taiwo is an is the life of the party. Like, okay, yeah, Queen says drink. So drink, I would also still just say no, yes, um, no, yes, and also no. All right, great. Now we have an imaginary events data set here, right? Now, um, what I mean by variables, maybe I could just also, maybe I will just, so let me share this with you guys. Um, if you want to read his article or his journal rather, right? And um, so I will, I like to define things with dictionary terms and then just walk my way through. Variables meaning, please. This or variable, variable meaning. Uh, let's see what we get. Blah, blah, blah. Changeable, not consistent. Elements feature that is likely to vary or change. Yeah. This kind of works for me. What's the math? The quantity? Yeah. Can I get something regarding data? in data are uh, it can be measured yeah exactly this this works right so a variable is any characteristic now this is why i wanted you know number text and um, boolean right just so that it sinks in for you right so a variable is any characteristic so this right here is a characteristic number this right here is a number and uh, maybe for drink, I could just put quantity. This right here is also a quantity, right? But let me just um, put a better quantity and just say two liters, 10 liters, 12 liters, 1,000 liters, and zero liters. I'm so sorry for your wedding that had zero liters of drink. It's not my fault, right? So we have characteristic number or quantity that can be measured or counted. Now, if you understand, if you've been through stats, or maybe not, but you know, when if you understand data types, you would understand that numerical data types could be counted or measured, um, you know, and not just only numerical too, but or rather that it cannot be measured or counted does not also mean that it is not a data type, right? Because even strings also also data types. Strings could be nominal or ordinal, um, you know. So if you remember from statistical data types, right? So yeah, now what this definition tells us is that this is a column. Cakes, like, the, 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 so I'm just put label column for you. So just make it better to understand. Nah, that's just bad, why? So you can't see, all right. So yeah, what's in blue is, is a column, is a variable, right? Is that the right way to do this? Uh, should I do it? I think I should do it this way. Yeah, I think I should do it this way. Yeah, and then possibly take this one out. Yes, all right. So, no, no, fill that back in. Uh, I hope you guys understand what I'm trying to say. So, you know, this is a column, this is a column, this is a column, this is a column, right? You understand this. Columns are also called variables in simple English. I think I should have said that all along. <laughs> so columns are also called variables. So it also, this is a variable, this is a variable, this is a variable, this is a variable, right? Now, they are called variables because they, if you come back here, um, they are something that can be called a data item from the second line here. A variable may also be called a data item or a data type, you know, that's a characteristic they must have one unique data type as we've established before you know and um an observation is something like this 
I'll just put this to be like red. Yeah, so this is an observation because you are taking an entity. So for example, I'm gonna just come here and say um, conveners, right? So uh, I don't know, man, Rita, um, Amy, whatever that means, James, Bill, and uh, Harry, right? So these are the people that owned this event. Now, Harry is an entity because this is Harry's wedding. He had five cakes, there was food, and Harry had no drinks, which is weird. We need to call Harry and check up with him. But Harry is an observation, or this row, row six, is an observation. So I should also call her Harry in. Let me just do that. So row six is an observation. Row five is an observation. Four, three, two, one, like that. Those are observations, right? In simple terms, rows are observations and columns are um, variables. Yeah, so does this make sense to you, Taiwo? I should have said that all along, but I don't know if this whole journey helped you understand that, you know, it's the best way to understand it. Rows are observations, columns are variables. You know, nothing major, uh, that's just it. All right, so just let me know, Taiwo, if you get it. Um, if you don't, this is more clear to me, right? Oh, thank you, thank you, love. Uh, yeah, so we've cleaned our data, you know, I, I mean, I only cleaned one column, right, which is uh, genres, because I didn't want it to like be so much. And um, I'm, I just want to show you something real quick. Uh, still in the still in the concept of cleaning your data. I just give me a second. I'm looking for where is this? Where is this? Where is this code? Do you remember me? Okay, no, I think I wrote it as a markdown. Yeah, yeah, I didn't write it as a markdown, so I should be looking for a markdown. Blah blah blah. Blah 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 blah. Okay, yeah, awesome, great. So this is what I'm looking for. And uh, let me just do something here. Budget, the mean, right? All right, cool. And uh, I'm gonna just do, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. All right, cool. So, oh, thank you, Tyler. You said your understanding. Awesome. Good to see my hard work is paying off. <laughs> All right, so um, this budget column here. Yes, I wish you'd call Harry. Harry's not well. We need to check up on Harry. This budget column here, um, you know, what do you guys think it is? So remember, this is a movie data set, right? So, but you know, so when when you see, um, what is it? When you see budget here, you know, what 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 comes to mind? What comes to mind? Just let me know in the chats or use your mic. Nobody, 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 nobody imagines what budget means. Are you serious? I feel so bad right now. Cost of production. David says cost of production. Yeah, that's true. Any other person? I, I mean, it's okay to say budgets. <laughs> I mean, the, the budget is the budget of the movie. Um. So yes, like David said, cost of production, right? So let's see something. Now, in the I did something here. I, I'm looking for the minimum value in that budget column and we have zero yeah so what do you guys think do you think this is a mistake i don't know man because why would somebody's budget for a movie be zero like you did not spend any money you not pay actor you just carry iphone 10 or 14 and started shooting movie not pay anybody at all so what do you guys think do you think this zero is correct do you think it's wrong let me know. Basically, the question is, if someone says they spent zero dollars, zero Naira on a budget, does that make sense? <laughs> like, do you think, it, because the David says an anomaly, Trust says it's wrong. I need more people. I need someone to say it's correct. Come on. 
No one thinks it's right. Are you kidding me? What if I say it's right? All right, David says it's wrong. Okay, cool. Awesome. So yes, right? It's not proper because why would your budget be zero? And it makes sense because I mean, you should, you should spend on your movie, right? People spend money on movies, yeah? But um, before we get to the concept of yes or no, so I'm going to show you something. So if you read what's on the screen, it says, no budget films are commonly submitted to film festivals. The intention being to, like, nah, no budget films are financed out of pocket by the director, blah, blah, blah. Takes, yeah, or uses a crew of volunteers. So, I mean, when you hear that someone volunteered to a movie or a project, it means that that person was not paid. So everybody in that movie doesn't get paid. He's his family member. That was my guy. That was a full Nigeria. I said he used his family members. What the hell? I'm trying to find another definition that um, explains no budget movies. I've seen this somewhere. The intentional blah, blah, blah. Come on, no budget films. No, no. What? Maybe I should just add what is a no budget? What is a no budget movie? Ah, yeah. So a no budget film is a film made with very little or no money. So that means that it could actually make sense that there are movies that people did not spend one cobble on that movie. Someone said Nollywood. <laughs> you guys are badly behaved. What's that? Why are you calling Nollywood? <laughs> so yes, people, I'm not the one that said it. Temidaya said Nollywood. So people like Nollywood in Temidaya's words. People like um, Taiwo's family members. <laughs> Please forgive me. But yeah, someone said they use his phone. Yes, people who use their phone to record. So they not spend money on that food. I guess that's why you watch movies and then you want to peel your eyes out. Because why? I mean, where you don't spend money on your movies. So, for example, these are a couple of no budget movies, right? So, now, now that you understand that there is a thing called no budget movies, if you see zero in the budget column, do you still think it's wrong or do you think it's right? Let me know. Do you think it's wrong or do you think it's right? Ah. Uh, Nobody wants to type again. All of you have started to think, wow, interesting. Okay, Taiwo said it's right. Who else? Okay, David said it's right. Uh, it's not wrong again. I'm serious. Oh, well, yeah, you guys are correct. It's actually right. Yeah, and I mean, you guys just let it now that things exist that are called no budget movies. Now, you see how it is important as an analyst to really, really, you know, take your work you know, a couple steps further, right? Now, I don't know if you've heard this term that is called um, domain knowledge, right? Previously, if you, okay, so domain knowledge basically just says, is your understanding of a specific industry, discipline, or activity. Um, how I would say this is, as an analyst, things exist that are called no budget moves. Yeah, okay, Queen, I think Queen actually knew this before. So how I, explain domain knowledge or one way to understand it is you know as an analyst just try to be exposed right try to broaden your general knowledge of stuff right because if you hadn't known that things like no budget movies existed like david said in the first time when he said that this was an anomaly you would have removed all the columns where you saw zero <laughs> and let's say you have 1000 columns and out of those 1000 columns 800 of them are no budget movies so you would go back to your, your audience or your clients and tell them, ah, oh, that this data is wrong. It's, it's no data is, is, is there is not working. It's dirty. It's, the data is bad. It's bad because you didn't understand that stuff like no budget movies existed. Yeah. So that just puts that in context for you. And um, I'm going to just do something else real quick. <clears throat> All right. So please, if you've got questions, just let me know while I make another sheet. Yeah. Uh, let me see. So I'm going to say names. Team, 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 lean, and lean. That's just weird. Uh, I'm going to say age. No, 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 no,
um, I don't know, man, 11, okay, height and feet, just to specify what is going up here. So height and feet. Uh, 11 with some, okay, yeah, yeah, let's, let's, yeah, 11, um, you know, six, uh, five, four, and uh, 100. Uh, okay, let me just, sorry, yeah. So let me just that. I think I'll do that, and I think I will do this. All right, cool stuff. So who understands this little data set here? Just type it in the chat for me. I've got like four minutes left. So yeah, if you understand what's going on here, just let me know. If you don't understand, um, you know, I'll definitely tell you what is going on here, but I'll just like to, you know, um, push on your curiosity. But what do you what do you think is happening here? I have two columns. One is called names, and the other column is called heights in feet. So what what do you think that is? Uh, nobody thinks anything about my data. It's just two columns. It's just two columns and five rows. Come on. I'm sure you guys think something about it. Oh, wow. Okay, no, no one has typed yet. All right, so I'm going to just tell you. Um, basically, this is the height of people in feet. Yeah? Okay, Taiwo says height of individuals. Thank you, Taiwo. I'm happy to know that someone understands this. <laughs> so good. thank you, thank you so much, Taiwo. All right. <clears throat> so let me let me let me see, right? Uh if you think anything is wrong with you know all of this, just type it in the chat. Um, you know, let's say <laughs> if you think there's no such thing as name as a name, just type it for me in the chat. If you think uh, I don't know, man. The data is messy. Let me know. If you think the data is dirty, let me know. Uh, whatever you think about the, the, this little data set, just type it in the chat. Let me know. Lim has missing data. Thank you, Taiwo. Yes, awesome. So what else? What else? Think, think, think a little bit deeper. Think a little bit deeper. Lim has no height. That's wrong. Thank you. So let's look outside of Nim. What about Nim and Tim? What do you guys think about those two people? This guy, this guy, and this guy. So as a hint, look at their height. What do you think? What do you think? Right? Thank you, trust. Nim can't be zero. OK, so what do you think about Tim? What do you think about Tim? The height is out of, exactly. Thank you. So I'm going to just do this. I'll color code them just so I'm going to use red, just so that we know these guys are bad. You know, there's there's a whole lot of things fishy about these guys because first of all, are you this tall? Why would you be eleven feet? So this is humanly not possible. I think the 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 tallest human being, um, some dude, not not Shaq O'Neal, um, eight feet, I think, tallest, uh, human ever. Blah 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 blah. Eight feet. I said it. Eight feet. Right. So when someone comes and says their height is 11 feet, you know, that is wrong. When someone, I mean, this, this one is evidence, you know, missing data. When someone says their height is zero feet, <laughs> even babies are not zero feet. So you know that this too is also wrong, right? Now, but however, in your cleaning journey, you might look at this data set and say to yourself, oh, Lim has missing data. So what you just do is you just remove it and just say, hey, I've cleaned the data, right? And now my data is clean because there is no missing value. But you, you, you needed some sort of extra, you know, I don't know if extra is the word, but you needed a, like to think deeper about your data to know that even though Sim and Nim had values, right, 11 and zero, those values are wrong in this context of height, right? So if I change heights to now say number of cars, then there, there will be no problem with this data set at all. Like everything is going to be fine. So I'm just 
reset that and I'm just reset this one too. So if I said this right, number of cars in this context, um, everything is fine because we just know that Neem doesn't have a car. Perhaps he owns bikes or jets. If I say age, in a way, it's also correct. You know, perhaps, you know, some people say babies are zero years. Or let me just say age in years, right? I think that's a better thing to say. So if I say age in years, you know, this also makes sense because like I said, people say babies are zero years. I mean, a one month old baby is, is a one month old baby. The, the baby hasn't reached a year yet. So this makes sense, you know. So this just puts in context the whole concept of cleaning your data, um, you know, for you. So it's not just about saying, oh, there is no missing data. And then you just remove the code, the rule and say, ah, I've cleaned it. Ah, I'm happy. We're going to eat cake. No, 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 no. You have to think deeply in context, right? It, it, for the context of that data set, it, is this value accurate? So again, back to this, right? Imagine if we saw something like negative 1,000. What would you think in the budget? If you saw a budget that had the value of negative 1,000 or negative 10 million, what would you think? Let me know in the chat. What would you think? And what what would you think about the data? And what would you do? What would you do? What would, what would just let me know in the chat, please. So negative a negative number in the budget column. Uh, I'm like two minutes past my time. Okay, debt, right? Thank you, Tamidaya. So debt. So. I, I, I'm not really big on movies, so I don't know if someone could shoot a movie on death. So I'll just use Google and just ask. And you know, um, are there death movies? Is that the question to ask, or could you shoot a movie on death? Are there death movies? No, that's that's not the right question to ask. Um, would you shoot a movie on death? I think maybe that's a question to ask. How to finance a film, blah, blah, blah. I'm just supposed to shoot a movie. Can you make a movie without money? So I guess you can shoot a movie on debt. I mean, like I said, I'm not I'm not a film. So this is again, remember my talk about domain knowledge, right? If I were to be a filmmaker, I would know if it's really I guess you could borrow money to make a movie, right? So it means you're owing the bank. So perhaps that actually does make sense, right? So but imagine the context where you know you 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 really need a very high level knowledge of that. Okay, yes, it's possible to borrow. Yeah, right. So trust says it's possible to borrow money to make a movie, right? So if if imagine if we saw negative one million, yeah. So we know that the producer is in debt, right? But imagine a context where you know it's not as easy as movies, or you know we don't know me and you, we, we don't know that context. So we will need to partner with people who understand that industry, who understand that context, who understand that market and say, hey, guy, look, I'm doing this analysis, man, and I saw this. What do you think? Is this Does this happen in real life? And then they say, oh, yeah, it actually happens in real life. So you say, oh, OK, oh, now I know what to do. Or they tell you, no, man, I've never seen this before. It, it doesn't ever happen. And then you say, oh, OK, so this is an outlier and this is an anomaly and I should possibly um you know let go of this all right so you know that just brings a wrap to my um <laughs> small tutorial on data cleaning right yeah um i wouldn't want to leave you guys um with this course to data yes i wouldn't want to leave you guys with this without this course rather <laughs> please pardon me i wouldn't want to leave you without this course um it's the data camp dealing with missing data um yes missing dealing with missing data in python it's just about the best um just about the best course i've seen so far on handling missing data in python you know so yeah please check it out it's, it's going to take you just four hours to complete um i don't know if they wrote it somewhere yeah that's it it's just going to take you four hours to complete so if you start it today you finish it today you know and that's it it's a very good course. And um, yeah, I think this brings me to the end of my um, talk or session or tutorial. Please let me know if you have questions. I'll definitely be answering them in the chat while Temidayo just does his stuff. So Temidayo, over to you.
Awesome, awesome, awesome. I, I actually like the way you, um, what I call it, service the situation and everything. It's <laughs> awesome, awesome. Um, Thank and you. also, sorry about the old power to me. It happens a lot, when, especially with the desktop. Um, okay, so if you have any question, okay. can you put it in the chat box? Or you can raise your hand, I can make you a speaker. So that's, we're waiting for people's questions. So the last two questions I told you about, we're going to ask you, yeah. which is, how you started your old data and software journey, and also what advice or what advice do you have for people just starting out in the data field? Ah, okay. Uh, thanks, thanks for that, fam. All right. So I have I have a LinkedIn article that um, puts thoughts to paper about how I started in my whole data science journey um, for some time. Actually, I think LinkedIn.com has been crazy on my desktop I don't know why but I'll just find that article and share it with the team um, so you guys just have a read at it um, but primarily I think it was from school um, I did my BSc at the University of Nigeria that was a hub um, curiosity <laughs> I think curiosity is the main skill that really got me into um, tech yeah. so um, I just I was curious I went to the hub I was like yo what, what happens here they were like oh it's a it's a cool place where people just come and you know developers they do cool stuff and I'm like what's a developer <laughs> You know, people that write, but I'm like, oh, wow, I I've known about this like since secondary school, I, you know, and I, I started to do the hub. Um, I was confused on what to learn. Yeah, this is the article. How do I click and share? So this is the article. So, you know, I, um, I was confused about what to learn. A couple of things I tried, like design and web dev and stuff. It didn't really work out for me. A friend of mine who I very hold very dear in my heart right now, um, he just looked at me and said, hey, Gotten, why don't you try out a Python for data science course? I did that. And, um, you know, that got me here yeah, where I am um, as a data scientist. So this is Rahul. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so that, that has been my data science journey. And one advice that I usually give people is, um, I think people, it's funny, it's funny how I say the advice I give people is people, right? But but to be honest, man, it's people, and and perhaps it, it might come from um, bias. I mean, I'm a data scientist. I've been doing this since 2018. I started learning in 2018, right? And I only got to become a data scientist because someone told me to be a data scientist. So imagine if I never had that person in my life. Imagine if I never, his name is Emmanuel, and I hold that guy so dearly. He's, he's my mentor, friend, brother. Imagine if I never had Emmanuel in my life who told me, hey, God sense, become a Python. Um, they are just take a Python course for data science, right? I wouldn't have been where I am today, or maybe I would have, but it would have taken me, you know, a, a, a longer amount of time or something, right? So people, you know, and, and to be honest, and, you know, just to also herald this talk of people um, more so. <clears throat> so um, just give me a second here. So this is my experience, my experiences on LinkedIn. I, I say this stuff and sometimes people 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 are always like they go ecstatic about it. But every job you see here, aside from this 54 gene one, were all recommendations. I kid you not. Like I don't know when since when did I so Emmanuel owns this company, um, the guy who referred me to data science. This one, Samuel recommended me, Bifola recommended me, Samuel recommended me, Gosby recommended me. Jerry recommended me. Samuel again recommended me. Um, Godspeed recommended me. Uh, what's her name? Ifoma recommended me. Um, team. So people, basically, like, I'm a product of people, you know. So I guess that, that's my advice for you, you know. Um, and, and when I say people, I mean community. I mean mentors. I mean your network. You know, you can't be a data scientist in your room. You know, you need to know people. You know, you need people to say your names in places where you don't belong to. You need people to, I don't know, man, but people, man, people, the course you're going to take on YouTube, someone made that course. So that just tells you how important people are. So I think that's my advice for you. I mean, front end developer, any tips? Man, I don't know, but I guess, I guess like, uh, I mean, both of us are software devs, right? So, oh, thank you, Tim Dio. So, both of us are software devs. Uh, <laughs> I think just keep building, 
Um, so people is like one thing I always say. Another thing that I always say is problems, right? Just try to always think about problems and think about creative way to solve problems. I think it's on my LinkedIn header somewhere. It says um, curious enough to solve problems. Where is it? Let me just see. Right there. Yeah, curious enough to solve hard problems. So, you know, the, the hallmark of being a software engineer or whatever you do in tech, right? Even if you're not writing code or something, is you're solving problems. Even as a digital marketer, you're solving marketing and sales problems for a company. So you need to ask yourself, how could I solve this problem? You know, how could I make this website um, more interactive? How could I increase engagement? You know, should I use SVGs? Should I use PNGs? You know, should I um, do something, right? Uh, so yeah, I, I don't know if, the, if those works for you guys, but I think that's that's it for me, man. <laughs> oh yeah, I oh, do freelance. Sure. I think you saw it in my in my what's it called in my experiences, was it? Um, see, the CFG role is a freelancer. Well, I can. It says yeah, right? Freelance, freelance. So yeah, I do I do freelance. Yeah. So if, if there's any other question, um, this is me, you know, like I think they've shared this already, so I don't have to share that again. Just, you know, text me, man. I'm always reachable. Uh, if you do Twitter, I guess my Twitter is uh, at TEDx. <laughs> yeah, that's that's me there on Twitter. The same thing on Instagram too. Um, email is uh, godsent, Eliel at gmail.com. Eliel godsent also at gmail.com. So yeah, I guess that's it. What oh, platform do you recommend oh, for freelancing? <laughs> okay, yeah, just go. I'll just answer them in the chat. Okay, okay, okay. Awesome. Because we're having another section by six, so awesome. Uh, I would just say thank you for making this session lively, actually. You really made it lively. I think you made everyone very, very interactive, and it's really, really fun. It's really fun. So thank you very much for pushing all your experience. So for the next session, we're having a Power BI section. For some of you that might be interested, we'll be having Time Intelligence using DAX. So this is going to be by six. So I'll just drop the link over here. I will can close this section for today. So for some of you that might be interested, we're having Time Intelligence using DAX. That's for Power BI. So I'll drop the link. So I will say, everyone, thank you very much. And do have a lovely...